Good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about um, how Quintain have uh, unlocked value from procuring data over the course of, of construction projects. Um, I'm going to skip through a few things here. The business case for the collection of this data, uh, the different elements that we're bringing together uh, as part of this business case, and the result that we've experienced as a result of, uh, of, of putting the, these processes together. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is the power of the data downstream from the construction concept of the CDE. So if you consider the CDE as a procurement vehicle or data coming from a construction project, you can start to think about the possibilities associated with supplying that data elsewhere for other uses further in time. That said, in many cases, the developers of real estate and built assets might not understand at a project's beginning how they, or those they sell assets onto, might unlock value from such data in the future. This presentation is an example of how we at Quintain have utilized that data to unlock business value. As a background, Quintain owns a very large estate surrounding the National Football Stadium and Wem around Wembley Stadium in London. The site is mixed use in nature, but the vast majority of what we're building and then operating ourselves is residential units. These residential units are operated by our platform, Quintain Living. The product we build is commonly known as PRS, standing for private rental sector, a form of large scale institutionally owned homes. Again, to reiterate, as a business, Quintain designs, develops and operates assets. So we have a longer than typical investment horizon in this asset class, longer than many clients in the industry. Plus we continue to design future pipeline of new assets on the site. Uh, so on this slide, I've, I've just um, added a couple of images of, of examples of our apartments. Um, and you can kind of see there's a bit of diversity in those apartments, which is something I'll come back to later in the presentation. Um, so today we've delivered somewhat, something in the region of 5,000 units within 11 different residential buildings. And we've got a pipeline of, of another 4,000 currently within eight, eight or more buildings. So uh, apologies here for the quite a text heavy slide, but the point I wanna make is that we should always be trying to increase value. In this case, with our pipeline of new buildings, we constantly have to look at opportunities for improving on the totex invested in our assets without compromising or actively improving on the cost, quality, and time to deliver units into the business. To assist with this investigation, we can look at several aspects of the end product that we would like to know. For example, how do our assets perform versus how they have been designed? Is there any fat in the design that we can get rid of? If there's any difference between the buildings or particular units within different buildings, is this something that points to a more popular product within our portfolio? In both cases, this insight can potentially point to preferred outcomes, which we can then push back into our pipeline requirements or our development brief. Another opportunity angle is the ongoing operational costs associated with the units. Cutting down unnecessarily use of resources saves on these limited resources like electricity and water and saves us on the costly utility infrastructure and consumption, consumption associated with those utilities. Third of all, we want to know when something might be faulty and using resources inefficiently as a result. All of this has become particularly pertinent in the recent um, energy crisis becomes more uh, and utilities become more and more expensive to everyone. Um, so how do we go about this? Well, we take a number of data sets and we bring them together. The first is the data we procure through the construction phase. We ask con our contractors through our specifications to deliver these facts about our portfolio into the client's CDE at practical completion. In this case, Zootec has become our standard delivery vehicle for that data. We end up with a con consistent set of structured data, data about each unit within the building. And all that data gets ingested into our Microsoft Azure cloud-based data warehouse at practical completion. Some examples of the facts that we have found most useful are obvious. The likes of unit size, as in area, square feet, square meters, unit type, as in one bed, two bed studio, but some are less obvious, like the form of ventilation, which has allowed us to probe interesting patterns in the data. 
But fundamentally, we collect as much data as we can without incurring a premium from the contractor. As well as the facts related to the residential units, we also collect a large amount of structured data on the managed assets, systems that require some sort of maintenance over the life of their, of their use on, in the building. Um, so focusing here on the residential units, we pair the facts about the portfolio with the changing measures. The most impactful are the two referenced here. Daily consumption of utilities, which consists of hot water, cold water, electricity and heat, which is what we are using for space heating throughout the heat network. And the occupancy status on that specific day of that specific unit from our leasing platform. This platform is also helpfully holds any mitigating circumstance relating to that particular unit. For example, a unit might be used as a show flat or be in a temporary use for welfare during the fit out of a building. So in these cases, a unit might not be generating revenue, but it would likely have some form of occupancy requiring lights on or taps running, much more than a completely vacant one. So a reason for using more than the minimum in resources. So worth noting here, there's an important to our solution to keep these operation elements as consistent as possible. Uh, so again, a text heavy slide, but um, the facts, the fixed facts and changing measures are paired together in a data model within our Microsoft Azure data warehouse. Calculations are automatically made each day and the data contributes to a growing picture of behaviors. The normal distribution of these behaviors is what is powerful to us. We can see statistically what is the, in the realms of expected and what is unexpected. Uh, so what I'm sharing here is um, some, some, some visuals from the analysis that I prepared on a year's worth of electricity data uh, for our portfolio. Um, so the normal distribution of the consumed units of electricity at the top in the middle showing a kind of left-hand skewed normal distribution. Um, pointing out the mean and the upper and lower quartiles. And then on the bottom left, a, a box plot illustrating um, the kind of the, those values for different size residential units. Um, in the below, I've cleansed the data using Python um, and, and, and removed spurious data so that we have a, a clean data set. Um, so Going back to the presentation earlier, the, the data I'm using is the fixed unit size to generate the, the, the unit type, um, the occupancy to extract which, which units were occupied on the days that we're taking these consumed units, um, and then calculating um, the consumed units from the, the, the meters in the apartment on that particular day. So I can also isolate those units uh, with mitigating circumstances like those which are being used as a show flat. Um, this data helped me define what normal looks like and perhaps more easily what is likely to be problematic. But understanding what is problematic was a bit more involved than a single shot. We observed a set of rules or out, uh, using an algorithm that sat on top of this data, witnessed what was happening on the ground and then adjusted the sensitivity. Final product um, is a, a daily email Power BI dashboard identifying units that need further investigation on a manageable scale. Since the product went live, we have proven utility reduction, saving the company lots of money, as well as it has evolved a deep understanding of the behavior of our products. Smart cities is a popular term in our sector. Sadly, much of the time I find it's a marketing gimmick rather than describing a meaningful value creation approach to workflows. To me, what I've described to you today is a smart cities approach to real estate development and operation in that it uses data to iterate towards improvement. That is the opportunity we have and have taken at Quintain. Our sector can often be driven by short-term investment horizons, conservatism in design by those wanting to protect against claims and at times subjective decision-making by those with the power rather than a data-driven approach which considers a whole life cycle approach. I'm a firm believer that longer investment horizons by owner operators in real estate will drive these better outcomes. Thank you.